Hey everyone, I just wanted to take some time to explain the recent SolarWinds attack and its significance on the IT and network security world. The hack on SolarWinds, known as Sunburst, you see what they did there, <laughs> was a highly sophisticated and calculated supply chain attack that leveraged SolarWinds Orion updates to deliver backdoor access to over 18,000 SolarWinds customers. Does that sound interesting to you? Let me explain it further. So what is SolarWinds and why is this important? Uh, well, they're an American-run company that are used extensively and internationally throughout the IT world for device and network monitoring. Nearly any network that is built that requires centralized and extensive monitoring will use SolarWinds to verify uptime, statistics, other SNMP data across all of their network nodes. Uh, the term one single pane of glass is mentioned on their website as a way to describe that this is a foundational tool used for networks and that you can look through just one pane of glass and see all relevant device information for your network. Here's a quick example for those who haven't seen what SolarWinds Orion looks like. Um, this is the dashboard view looking at a single device. You can see the network node at the top left that they're looking at here. and just from taking a quick look at this picture, you can see how much information SolarWinds collects for devices within an enterprise. And now imagine being an outside actor and being able to compromise the server that is running SolarWinds. Uh, you would definitely consider that to be the ultimate jackpot of hacking targets since all SolarWinds servers inherently have access to all the nodes within the network. This allows you to spread out further and infect more systems. And if you're able to stay within that network undetected and spread out to other devices over weeks or several months, really the sky is the limit in terms of what you can lay down in the network and ensure that you always have a rat or remote access Trojan installed on something in the network. The chances of them finding something that's dormant uh, it's very unlikely you can activate it or have a timer that'll activate it after months have passed or something like that and continually reinstalling these rad programs to maintain network access it's it's really a nightmare for anybody that works in in SecOps. and while SolarWinds is taking most of the headlines for this hack they were not the true end goal and just the first step for this threat actor that accomplished the hack they were simply the vector used in order to gain internal access to thousands of other networks, with true targets likely being high-level government offices. The Sunburst hack was able to operate within networks undetected for at least nine months and wasn't discovered until uh, a published report from FireEye, a very well-regarded cybersecurity firm. They published their report in the middle of December and it's important to know that these cybersecurity firms are often hired for their ability to conduct red team network penetration testing. I'm putting quotes over red team, but you can't see that. Anyways, they, they hire these companies to perform network penetration testing on large enterprises, and they use very capable tool sets that may even get whitelisted within these enterprises to test the security processes and the security capabilities of that enterprise. FireEye discovered the attack after realizing that their tool set was stolen, which was discovered a few days before anyone knew that SolarWinds was even involved. And that made news headlines uh, across the web and was considered a pretty big deal in its own right. People were very angry with FireEye that they had lost their red team hacking tools. And it wouldn't be until a few days later that FireEye was able to prove that the hacking vector road into their network began at SolarWinds. Here's a quote from FireEye's report that they released on the hack. Uh, so it says, FireEye has uncovered a widespread campaign that they're tracking as UNC2452. The actors behind this campaign gained access to numerous public and private organizations around the world. They gained access to victims via trojanized updates to SolarWinds, Orion IT monitoring and management software. This campaign may have been, may have begun as early as spring 2020 and is currently ongoing. Post compromise activity following the supply chain compromise has included lateral movement and data theft. 
The campaign is the work of a highly skilled actor, and the operation was conducted with significant operational security. As a quick note, this UNC name that FireEye gave to the threat actor is kind of like a neutral and non-political name given in-house by FireEye to describe this hacking group. Um, and though FireEye stayed neutral when naming the attacker, the cybersecurity community and U.S. government really did not. They attributed the hack to APT-29, a.k.a. Cozy Bear, which refers to a Russian state-sponsored hack. And just for future reference, the APT-29, it stands for Advanced Persistent Threat 29. So each state-sponsored hacking group, um, or really any advanced hacking group, would be given APT and then a number. So APT comes up in the security world all the time. It stands for Advanced Persistent Threat. FireEye later goes on to explain that they discovered that a specific SolarWinds DLL file, which was digitally signed contained a backdoor that communicates via obfuscated HTTP to third-party servers. The significant part of that sentence is that the DLL was digitally signed. So the digital signatures are a trusted and authentic way to verify users and file transfers and all sorts of data transfers on the internet. When you connect your online bank to do some online banking, pay off your credit card, your web browser is using digital signatures under the hood in order to protect that transmission of data from eavesdroppers and as well as verify the source of the data that you send to the bank. So you might be asking, how was this threat actor or APT able to have their malware digitally signed and considered authentic by SolarWinds? That question was answered by reversing labs. They were able to inspect met metadata from each SolarWinds update and deduce that it's likely that the source code commit process was compromised by an outside threat. If you're able to hack a company and then gain access to their code approval and commit process for their software products, such as SolarWinds Orion, you'd have the ability to add your own code into the pipeline of the software version build. Uh, clearly, the addition of this new and malicious software went unnoticed, which is, which is partially because the threat actor intentionally named their m malicious code to mimic the naming convention that SolarWinds was already using for their legitimate code. The impact of this attack is likely to be enormous, and the full extent of this breach will probably never, ever be communicated to the public. It'll instead be restricted to just trusted parts of the intelligence community and all the small nuances and details and um, tiny things that you may want to know about uh, will likely never be released to the public. So what did the threat actor or APT do after compromising these various companies with the solar burst attack? So after the hack would take place, the infected system in the various compromised organizations were configured to probe the threat actor's system to request instructions from its home server. If you recall earlier, I mentioned that the malware communicated with obfuscated HTTP. HTTP. It's a mouthful. <laughs> and since HTTP is unencrypted, you would think that a firewall or maybe a human analyst would be able to quickly pick up that something was wrong in the network. Um, however, that wasn't the case with this. They used uh, steganography, which is the art of concealing data within a seemingly innocuous file. Um, and the threat actor was able to communicate back to its home server unencrypted and avoid detection. The malware sent bodies of data in seemingly benign XML formatting that was related to the .NET framework, but upon closer analysis actually had embedded commands spread across several hex strings within the HTTP response. Once a network was compromised with the sunburst attack, it really was hard for a defense team to try and determine what, if anything, the threat actor was able to compromise within the network. At the very least, an assumption of data theft could be assumed, and security analysts definitely had some long hours to determine if their systems were further compromised with dormant malware. Uh, this whole incident, as well, was exposed right before Christmas. It's kind of a bummer. <laughs> And I hope all you guys out there in IT poured one out for the boys that uh, work in SecOps. So who are the big dogs that were really affected by this? Um, well, it's large and extensive. 
Uh, it includes several large municipalities, hospital networks, governments. Um, some of the big standout tech companies or other names would be Cisco, Intel, VMware, Microsoft, MediaTek, whom is the second largest semiconductor supplier for mobile phones, and BankCentral.com, which, which supplies IT services and security to banks. All right, you might be asking yourself after hearing me explain this, how in tarnation could a company prevent themselves from being hacked like this? And there's a couple answers to this question, and neither of them are very uh, good. First, if your SolarWinds server is disconnected from the internet, this hack probably could have been prevented. Um, this was likely the case for severe or extremely secure networks in the government, but unfortunately for most, the convenience to have the server connected to the internet in order to directly download the updates and do other updating to the server um, is very common. The second way to prevent it is maybe have a lazy sysadmin in control of the SolarWinds updates that completely neglected to bring in these new updates for 2020. Um, it's not that uncommon for big organizations to just find a a version that they like and stick with it long term but also if there are you know there could have been legitimate security fixes in the 2020 updates um, that they recommended be applied to servers and across networks so that may have encouraged people to pull these updates unknowingly installing these this malicious package from the uh, SolarWinds update service Really, the bottom line here is that if a nation state or an APT sets you as the target for, your, for a hack, you're going to get hacked. There's almost nothing you can do to stop it. They have, they have zero days. They have a teams of people working behind them. This is what they do 24-7. If you're the target for a hack, you're likely going to get hacked. All right, so let's say that your enterprise was impacted. What can you do? The best advice right now is to follow the guidelines put out by FireEye. They have tools that they develop to identify the signatures used by Sunburst and see if anything is actively running within your network. And the next measure would be to update to the latest version of SolarWinds, uh, ironically, <laughs> Even, despite that being where the problem started. Um, but is there any way to know if additional malware was added to your network during the nine or so months that this threat went undetected unfortunately no and sysadmins and security analysts will just have to remain vigilant and keep an eye on things so the solar burst hack may be the most widespread hack of all time especially at an enterprise level and is certainly one of the most sophisticated attacks maybe not the most sophisticated attack that crown is probably still worn by stuxnet Stay tuned and subscribe if you want to see that upcoming video of me breaking down the details of the Stuxnet hack. If SolarWinds did anything, it was that it exposed an absolute weakness in the supply chain for these software vendors. All of these enterprise networks used SolarWinds and all of them trusted SolarWinds to put a product out there that was free of malware. SolarWinds is not the only software that is used across several enterprises. There's a laundry list of software that we could chime off at, that we see at all sorts of enterprises. Each and every single one of these um, could have been compromised and spread to enterprise networks just like SolarWinds was. If these supply chain type attacks start becoming more frequently, we're really in for a world of hurt because there doesn't really seem to be an obvious or easy way to stop them. I just wanted to shout out to my old subscribers that have stuck around, still subscribed on this channel and are watching this video. I hope you like it and it's been a long, long time. Uh, my goal with the channel is to really begin more, moving towards more tech oriented and maybe with a focus on networking. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening to this and viewing the, the video. If you'd like to know more details on how this attack took place, feel free to use my sources which I've linked in the video description. Thanks for watching.